I could never have enough money to pay you. I could never have enough hugs to give you. I could never have enough kisses. I just love and I appreciate each and every one of you because you are a part of changing the narrative. You are a part of eliminating cervical cancer. You are a part of stopping the stigma. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. How are you feeling? You look amazing. We are here tonight to uh, educate, to enlighten, to inform you about a cancer that can be eradicated. Tonight you will hear things that will touch, move, or inspire you. I am so freaking lucky to be here at this theater right now with my friend Tamika because I am lucky to be alive and I'm lucky to be representing the people that are not here today. No partial hysterectomy, no colposcopy, no stage one cervical cancer was ever going to invade and devour me. And today I stand before you unequivocally, unapologetically, amazingly cancer free. I am a rape survivor. I'm a cervical cancer survivor. I am a survivor. And it is my hope that in my lifetime, while some may win and some may lose the battles, that we win this war. My cancer, along with my survivorship and my advocacy work, is such an integral part of who I am. And it will be a piece and a part of the legacy that I hope to leave for you. Lily, I love you so much. Signed, your survivor mom. Today, I no longer count my years. I only count my sunny days. When I start to be worried about my timeline or if I'm choosing the right, right treatment plan, I just look around at what I'm doing. I remind myself that I may not be getting rid of my cancer, but I'm absolutely defeating cancer by the way I live my life. You did not ask for this. You just need to listen to your body, get screened, and remember, you're never alone. But what I want you to know tonight is that there is hope. There is hope. Silence is not the answer. I am passionate about my advocacy. I am passionate about teaching other women, family members, caregivers, what I know, what I have learned about cancer, about HPV, about vaccination. But now I can say, if I hadn't been so persistent, and I, if I didn't continue with my follow-up, my story could have been different right now. Because in my case, my HPV was persistent as well. All of a sudden, this thing that I never thought twice about had wiped my future into a blank slate. I cried for my unknown. I cried for the fact that I had no idea that this test was so important. And I cried for the fact that I knew so many other women were in the same boat as me. You know, I do my thing as a GYN oncologist, but I, I really feel like a round of applause is necessary because I never stop being human about what patients go through, what mothers go through, and I'm deeply touched. And I think the ladies that were here speaking about their stories deserve a round of applause. Lying there, spreading your legs, having your lady parts exposed for those to see, wondering why, is this happening to me? Did I do something wrong? Am I a bad person? Grasping for whys, wanting to know the reason, finding out your stage after that through biopsies and scans like a little laboratory rat. As a mother, the worst nightmare is seeing your child suffer from such pain and disease. Ayona died June the 13th, 2015. She lived 10 years. So ladies, when I say, go get your screening, get your, get your HPV testing, get checked. Don't be afraid. Talk about it. Let people listen. Listen to your bodies. Sometimes you have signs and sometimes you don't. But be very mindful of your bodies 
And I know, you know, a lot of women like, well, you know, I don't, I'm so scared to look, you know, and touch and make sure everything, you know, I, I just don't like that. This is, mm, eh. You better. You, bet, you better. Because if you don't, it could be too late. 